Welcome back to the channel. So we've just put um, 10.6, which is basically 10 and a half litres of E5 fuel for a change in the uh, classic. And I usually just run E10 most of the time, I just came on to put E5 in. And so what have we done? We have done 185 miles, does that? Yeah, 185 miles. And that's quite hard riding, as you know, up the north and the Nico range. And although my bike tends to never go under 90 to the gallon, whether it's E5 or E10. So I've already established that my bike does a minimum of 90 to the gallon, even with all the changes. And the only reason it does anything less than a stock bike is if you're just working it harder because it will go harder so yeah it, just, it says basically what basically if you open the throttle more you're going to use more fuel it's, it's as simple as that um, and that's as big of an effect on the petrol than whether the bike's standard or not that's how you ride it um, how heavy you are, if it's windy, do you ride hills? So much is all hearsay, you know. And I think everybody's getting too wrapped up in all these sort of things and arguing away about it. Just bloody ride the things and enjoy them, that's it. <laughs> something about the whole E5, E10 thing is um, ethanol fuel. I can run ethanol fuel E10, cheap nasty as the fuel in my will is cheap and it runs absolutely perfect. I do add an additive but I don't think like it actually needs it. Um, I think it's just all marketing crap. Um, I mean because the Jeeps were designed to run like 6 and 5 octane back in World War 2 and the fuel was crap they had um, and it runs fine so go figure if that if that runs fine and then you know your your Enfield 350 is gonna run fine on E10. So do you need to use E5 or not? I'd like you to. Anyway, onto the coast east of North Berwick and look at that view of the bash rock here. Absolutely fantastic, especially today. Just perfect. So this is about half two in the afternoon, quarter to three, I'm heading home now. Um, and yeah, it's busy, it's summer, you know, it's going to be busy. It is what it is. Um, I'll probably ca catch up with cars soon. Um, I did see a caravan going past the garage before I pulled out, so I'll we'll catch up with that quite soon. There it is actually in the distance. But anyway, just cruise home. I've enjoyed the morning peace and quiet to myself. Don't get your way all the time. So what else is happening? I see there's a new Royal Enfield Gorilla 450, which is basically a new Scram, which is quite exciting. Um, I'm not going to jump on my high horse about it and get all excited because I don't think I'll ever buy one. <laughs> quite simple. I'm not spending five grand on a motorbike for my income um, uh, for what I get out of this bike for the value, um, and I've got a spare engine, etc. 
But yeah, it looks like it'll be a good bike for a lot of folk. Folk that need that bit more speed, that's fine, just go and buy that. Um, yeah, I'll just be an old Luddite sticking my air-cooled bike. <laughs> it does what I need out here in the, in the sticks, you know. already um, with my mountain biking in the past um, got sucked out of the whole place must have must have bike you know trading stuff in as in the and, and stuff and sometimes you just got to be contented with what you have and value what you have and sometimes the longer you own something you know the stronger the bond you get for something and the long the more you love it like so my jeep's only four or five years old away. Um, I absolutely love that thing. You know, and I'd never sell that. No way. Most of the things I own, I wouldn't sell. Um, there's things I've always wanted. Or when I've got them, I've realised as well. You look for, you know. Um, I think learning to make the most of things you know, what you have is more rewarding. Just looking at those fields, they're still really green, the wheat fields. We're going to need a lot more sunshine to ripen those fields. Um, I think the main harvest is going to be quite late this year, you know that. I reckon it's going to be well on in August before the combos get around the feed. Barley, I mean winter barley, spring barley, winter barley certainly is ready now, it's just damp. Um, so, the, you know, we've not got a long wait for that. Um, I'm looking forward to getting the drone up though and doing some harvest films because the county is beautiful at harvest time. It really is stunning. Um, yeah, that'll be cool to see. thing I need to get is back out my fat bikes on the beaches again. I mean, I kind of neglected that in the whole last year. Um, and yeah, I love uh, being along the coast, hence the name of my whole blog stroke channel then <laughs> it became. Anyway, um, so I'll be doing some more stuff on bikes. And it, it's just other stuff to put in between my motorbike and my Jeep films. And a few other things, World War Two stuff, and they're all interactive. You know, they're all like interrelated as such. Should I say? You know, um, yeah. So we'll look out for some more stuff like that coming up soon. There's a planned in the works weekend um, up to Mull with the motorbikes camping, but I'm holding my breath on going. I mean, I'm only going to go if the weather forecast is good because I'm not booking anything, ferries or campsites or that. I'm just going to wing it close to the time that the forecast is right because as the forecast has been, I'm not going to be camping. It's not. It's just not the summer for it, sadly, this year. And there's plenty to do at home, plenty of day trips, stuff to go and see and do. 
Um, yeah, but I'm looking forward to this weekend just doing next to nothing to get a recharge. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to recharge. So let's get back on track. It's been a lovely day. Um, the weather's still topsy turvy. Looking at the forecast, there's hot weather coming in, but there's also rain here and there. Yeah, it's been a weird summer so far. But I'm just glad to get out of my bike when the weather's good. So I'm going to pull in and get a photo for a thumbnail. And the old road that I'm pulling in here is marked on the OS maps as Wear Road, W A R E which is in fact a seaweed road it's known as. There's three or four wear roads marked on maps in East Lothian around North Berwick and Tyringham here. Um, so once upon the time they took all the seaweed off the beach for fertiliser and fields. There you go, a wee bit local history. Another nice day commuting. Just did a voice over there for the road because it's really noisy with the wind today. Quite like breezy. Anyway. A nice green picture, eh? Green bike, green road. Sounds great. Absolutely love the noise of this bike. <laughs> Brilliant. So rewarding. Brilliant. Okay, I'll get up the road, get home. See you again soon, okay? Bye!